My first time. Wow. I remember. I remember my first time here, born on Earth. <laughs> it was interesting. I don't remember the birth. I remember the journey. I was just speaking just now recently um, about the, the past lives that I've had and the transition between death and into the afterlife, heaven, if you want to call it that. I don't really like the word heaven because it can have a lot of dogmatic views upon it. Um, prefer like, you know, the afterlife, I guess. My most earliest memories of this current life that I live in this body, that I remember many flashbacks when I was younger, um, being in a green room, listening to a radio, and then things just blacked out, and I end up in this black room, this, this dark room, on a plinth, like a tall, like plinth up high, um, and there were people walking around me. And then suddenly I started to get shown these images, pictures, memories, you know, emotional stuff, um, happiness, sadness, all these sort of emotions within five minutes, my whole life flashed in front of me, like, you know, what I've achieved, what I felt. And then after, you, I'm, I was left in this sort of like, I mean, we've seen like things like the, the scales in like heaven. It's, it's not like, oh, this is where you, you know, where you go now. It's not like you're, you're initiated or it's like, oh, okay, they, they finalized, you know, the masters up, up on the other side. They, they finalize, oh, okay, well, you've been okay, you've been good, so we're going to let you go here. No, it wasn't like that. It was more about your own journey. So I was shown, I believe, my previous life, and I didn't know it all, first of all. It took many years on and off to put the pieces of puzzles, the, you know, pieces together to make this puzzle, and still it's not really 100% solidified. Like, there's still, I'm trying to understand um, exactly what has happened um, but for my searching and like regressions my own regressions to myself I found that I was um, a carpenter and a Spitfire pilot uh, in one of the world wars I'm not too sure which one I think it was probably the first world war and I was based in Chicago in, in America and yeah, not like a lot of memories, but just flashbacks, really. Um, I remember, you know, because we didn't have washing machines then, like electrics. We had some, but not like high technology where I could wash clothes. So I, I remember, you know, the basics. However, when I passed over from that past, that previous life, um, whatever year that was, 1900 something, I'm sure it was. Um, I mean, I remember the sounds of 1940s, 50s music, like, it, you know, when I feel very drawn to that. So it's like, okay, I must have been alive then, or I loved music, and I still do now. Um, and my remembrance in the army, and I remember many aspects of other past lives that have, this is the thing about past lives, like they, they contribute to your personality. It's like you take really small segments of those times, the things that you know, like wisdom, philosophy, the things that you feel at home, which is why I love wearing combat trousers. I feel comfortable because I've been in the army twice in past lives and, and wearing boots, like, you know, really heavy sort of military boots. I just feel a lot more grounded and I've been like that for many years since I can remember. Um, so anyway, passing over from that previous life into the afterlife, you know, the non-physical, I remember with like a master, a guide, not like a, a spirit guide, but like somebody who was showing me, they were like, oh, how do you feel? And I felt quite emotional after seeing all this, all these flashbacks of memories and feelings and occurrences and it's known as the Hall of Mirrors, you know, you go through this this time where you reflect on your last life and you want to see, okay, what can I change? It's about yourself because it's about your own journey. No one's punishing you. 
you punish yourself at the end because it's like, oh, I, I wasn't a good person. I feel bad about that. You see how you affected people. You feel the emotions. You feel their emotions, not just yourself, but you see the reverse. So rather than seeing yourself looking at the other person, um, you know, giving them like a bad feelings or good feelings, but you see the reverse, you know, you see how they took that emotion. And that's what I experienced. And I was left with this very emotional state after, you know, you could say it's like the scales, like, oh my God, like, yeah, I was okay. But like, I treat some people bad and, you know, gave love and I served my country and, so anyway, um, after all that, I was feeling a bit emotional and this, this guy that I was with um, took me out into like the sunshine, you know, in the non-physical. all sounds pretty crazy what I'm telling you. Um, and went down these steps with him. And he says, just, just take some time as long as you need just to refresh and reflect. And, you know, just to, these are like healing gardens. He didn't say that, but you knew it. And there was like, you know, there was a little insects around, butterflies, you could hear the birds, you could see the sun, just everywhere. It was strange. And then you could see the moon and some planets and flowers and there was like bushes and trees. And then as I came down to this clearing, I started to see this low canopy of trees, like a, like a roof of trees. And it was like there was this river flowing through, this gentle stream, not river, it was like a stream, very shallow, very, very shallow, but very beautiful, very perfect. And there was two people sat halfway down and they were just looking at the waters and, you know, just, just looking, reflecting, and they were hugging each other. And, and I was just feeling a very at peace and a peace I hadn't experienced before. Like, wow, this is, I feel safe. I feel secure. I feel happy. I feel healthy. I, didn't feel cold, didn't feel hot, I felt normal, I felt comfortable. There was no echoiness in the in the atmosphere as I spoke, as I just hummed and hear the birds. It felt like you were outside, you were, you were in a in a world that was just beautiful. And that's something that's always kept with me, that memory of being in the afterlife, if that was the afterlife, because like it felt like I remember these scenes and it's like throughout my whole life I've had other scenes throughout my life and I haven't been able to work it out and I pinpoint it down to I mean I had these memories since I was very very young you know one two three years old very very vivid being at um, my first house in Reading in Berkshire and sitting and not being able to speak or talk at the time I was so young but then having flashbacks like memories of like where I was and I never spoke this to anybody because it was just a memory and I never knew that it was a past life until many years later when I started to discover past lives. So a lot of things were made obvious when I was younger, you know, like, well obvious but like memories, you know, very deep memories. And then as time went on, many years later I moved here, 15, 16 years ago in Somerset, out in the country. And one of the first people I meet is um, a lady at a crystal shop. And um, <clears throat> we hung out a few times and, and met up and, you know, very rarely, but, you know, with, with some friends and stuff. And, and then one day, a couple of years later from meeting her, um, I, I was saying, I, I keep fit remembering this time, like a past life, like I had, and I feel like I was a guide. And this woman got stabbed at a wedding. And she said, like, go on, continue, like, your story. And I said, well, I was trying to stop her from getting, like, stabbed with a knife at, at, at her wedding. And I feel like I was trying to get her attention and she didn't listen to me. And my friend lifted up her top, showed me her, the side of her body, her skin. And there was this mole. <laughs> and she said, that was me. And I was like, wow, like, okay, interesting. Um, and it's like that, that confirmation was very deep for me. I've had others as well. There was another friend of mine, um, long, long, you know, one of my oldest friends. Um, we, we met in Cornwall at a trance uh, workshop back in 2004. And um, we connected straight away. And then many years later, uh, I started tuning into this past life where I was in Peru in, in like some, I believe, some old ruins or pyramids, and she was a trans medium, 
And it's interesting because her current life, she has a resistance of going into trance, you know, being a medium. And, and I found this past life that we were together. Well, I was a native of the place and I don't know where she was from, didn't work that out. But um, I've given the name of the guy who was controlling her, you know, being very controlling. And I said the name, it came to me straight away when I was on the phone to her. And she just went all shivery and like, oh my God, that name. It was a very ancient name and it was like Bogu or something like that. Um, it wasn't that word, I've forgotten it now. It will come to me in a bit. And it, she just broke down in emotion. And I said, yeah, I believe this is like past life stuff where this man wanted to gain power and he used you for your power to go into trance, to get information, to get knowledge and use it as his own. And you you rebelled and you were in trauma and I came and saved you. And, and um, we, it wasn't still the, the puzzle, the piece of the puzzle one on Vivid. It's like remembering a movie that you watch, you know, you remember some scenes, but you don't remember the whole story and you sort of get the understanding. So yeah, I've just been speaking just now and about past lives and and then before that or after, I started going into a deep trance and like almost clicking out of this reality into like a very deep dream and I was almost losing consciousness. And that's happened a couple of times last year in 2020 where I was busy in the garden. I started remembering dreams um, that I had like that night and I went into such a deep like state, like a trance, that I, ha I almost collapsed on, on the floor, not, not blacked out, but I was like breathing, like, and I was like, I could feel my whole body like tingling, uh, like, a, like a cold and a hot feeling, like it was like trauma, but it wasn't trauma because this, these dreams I had were recent and I was getting sucked back into the dream. It was quite scary. I never had that before. And I was trying to resist it happening. Um, it always seems to happen when I'm out in nature. So past lives, you know, some people believe them, some people don't. But the way I see it is that life is about experience. I recently just watched um, my family and my partner um, a, a film called Soul. And it's a Disney Pixar film. You can find it on Disney+. Plus. Amazing movie. It's about this jazz singer, soul singer, who dies unexpectedly and then his mission is like to help train this new soul that's never had an earthly experience and it's a beautiful movie um what i found from that is that it's about experience you know life is about experiencing it's not about purpose you know it's like finding your purpose it's we have a purpose to live an experience and to grow and to in love, you know, of having an experience, you know, how beautiful is that, that these, in the movie, the soul, but these new souls that are like born and created and they go to this portal down to, into earth, they have to go through these very fast little schools of like personality to, to grow their personality. So yeah, I just wanted to share that because it was such an amazing thing to watch and it reminded me of when I had a flashback of going through like a vortex, a portal, for attaching my consciousness to my physical body, like the etheric cords. And it's like you have to go through this, this energy, this energy portal, vortex thing. Sounds crazy, but it's like it's an entrance point to your, to your new physical body that you are connecting to. I'm still learning about all this. Um, I would love to speak when the opportunity is. I mean, it's 2021 at the moment. It's January. Trans mediums and stuff had some great opportunities in the past. I've had so many questions. And then when it comes to it in seances and in trance circles, I'm like, uh, yeah, I've quite got loads of questions. And then I just froze. And it's like, I need to write these questions down. Like, okay, what, what information can you give to me, you know, to help my, my journey and, and help and understanding about life to help others like such as yourselves, you know, just, Recently, I started thinking about, hey, I just need to just talk, you know, like get the knowledge out and allow me to understand life and to share with you. And um, thank you for your comments already. Those who have left comments and messaged me privately, got in touch, sent emails because, you know, you've been watching my videos and like 
you've reached out, which is great. You know, it feels like I'm not alone in this journey. And for many years I've kept quiet. Um, and it's like, well, what amazing thing to, to experience a past life or future life, and all this information is still here in the ethers, in the in the physical Kashyyyk records, which is like YouTube. You know, I can leave these videos up, and maybe in hundreds of years' time, they they might still be there, or parts of it, where I can access old videos of me on the collective electronic consciousness of the internet. How amazing would that be if I had the power, like some yogis from Tibet and stuff, they know and the predicted when they when their next incarnation would be and they'll leave riches to that family you know for their arrival to, to come back into the world because they had such a such a vast deep consciousness and understanding of reality these yogis these teachers these masters exist around us so you know in solitude and out in nature and and in in the modern world and it's uh you know past lives current lives it's it's not all happening at the same time, it's happened, but yet the memory is happening, so you can always tune into it. It's this great, the Akash, you know, of collective, and I think these are the things that we tune into and we remember. Nothing is truly lost. I just, we come into this world with a fresh new slate, a new soul experience to experience something firsthand again, to, to don't have the baggage, but sometimes we come in with a bit of a residual energy. Because it, it's just kind of like, oh, okay, new, new, fresh experience. But we just add a little bit of your past there, just to, because that's who you are. Interesting. I, I really, I'm looking forward to passing over, you know, and going into the, the world beyond, beyond the physical, and to really learn more about life and consciousness, and to teach others, you know, because it's like, these things I'm very interested in, you know, like the theories and understanding and knowledge about what truly happens beyond physical death. That physical death is just a transition that, you know, you know, do we have a second death? You know, do we die in the, the afterlife? In a sense that then we incarnate again, do we go for a second death? That's something I would like to know. Or do we just shed parts of ourselves and where does that energy go? Is that energy? Is it just a, a memory? Uh, electronic consciousness, the neurons in our brain? What can be found there? So yeah, I just wanted to share, you know, a little bit of a glimpse of some past life memories. There are many more, um, but this one was the most recent one. Um, my first time, you know, remembering. Um, and that was the first thing I remembered, being conscious in this planet, not as a baby, not as just being born. I remember being in my cot the day after coming back from the hospital, but I remember having these flashbacks and memories of somewhere I was before, but my brain wasn't developed enough to understand and to piece the words and the understanding together. I remember it very complex and difficult. Um, and as years went on and I understand language a bit better and life, then I started to piece the pieces together and they started to make sense. I could be crazy, <laughs> but I don't believe so because um, I've had confirmation from uh, like mediums, trans mediums, and myself as well, um, you know, with music, 1940s, 50s music, uh, remembering, not remembering songs, but having a warmth, you know, of America, of Chicago, and yeah, I don't know, it's interesting, life, you know, what, what it gives us, what it can teach us, and what it can show us. Life is truly amazing, it's just we need to remember how special our lives are, and this is another thing that the hall of mirrors that I went through on, the, on that on that plinth in that dark room, from my death from the physical, in ninety something years old or my late eighties, I was that, around that age. That when I passed over, I, I believe it was a natural death. Died in my armchair, listening to the wireless, and waking up on this plinth. The hall of mirrors. I was showing my whole life in front of me very very fast, and I sort of looked back, having this remembrance of like, wow, that's like ninety years of in five minutes, like however long I was there for. But even it was like an hour of me being there. It was such a short time compared to the 90 odd years that I'd been physically alive and experiencing those experiences and then being shown all this emotion and, and scenes. And then you're in this state of like, wow, I wish I tried better. 
So the more belief and experience you have with physical mediumship and, and spiritual experiences, psychic experiences and life, you understand that this life isn't just temporary, you know, it's, it's part of the many other lives that you have and it builds your personality and your, your emotional toolkit to deal with other life experiences and you just evolve souls, recycled souls, old souls, they just come into this world just knowing how to do things because they've done it before. They may not know how, it's just they follow their intuition and their guidance and it's like they just have a knack to things. It doesn't mean that new souls can't do anything, it's just like some people have a gift to put their hands to anything and they can do anything. And those are usually old souls because they've been here, they're remembered. But no one's perfect, you know. We all have our rusty parts, our, our shadow parts, our, our weaknesses. But that's why we're here to learn, you know. Don't see me as perfect. I've, you know, heard that before. Like, oh, you seem so perfect and calm. And it's like, you'll see me as I am now. I have my times when I get angry, I get upset, I get emotional, get very sensitive. But it's life that gives us experience. It's not about purpose. It's about being in service to yourself and others and leaving a nice footprint in this world that others can follow, hopefully. That's my philosophy anyway, of just enjoying every moment as much as you can. And sometimes it's hard, sometimes you don't want to do anything, but really value this life and, you know, don't be lost. There are many lost souls out there and many souls that are waiting to come into this physical reality, you know, waiting for that ticket, their time. and. If you're wasting your life or feel like you're wasting your life, like do something that makes you happy and can help others and it doesn't matter what it is. You know, as long as you're not hurting anybody, you're you're living a purpose of experience and knowledge and nothing is ever going to waste. So keep it going. Um, be brave, be strong, and um, you know, you're you will get what you want. Manifestation is a beautiful thing and we can manifest many more beautiful lives, but the most important time is right here, right now. Thank you for watching.